Hi, I'm Jill Strzok from Concord Girl Scout Troop 72660. Since 1931, the Scout House has been the center of the Concord community, especially the center of the Scout community. It is now at a key crossroads and needs your help. The old building is in need of major renovation. Just as Concord rallied to create the Scout House 80 years ago, the town is now being asked to help make sure it remains a fixture of community life for the future. In 1925, Girl Scouting was just beginning in Concord with only 38 girls. The girls often met in a school classroom, but by 1930, the Girl Scout community had expanded to three troops and 120 girls. The schoolrooms quickly became too small to hold meetings, and other larger spaces were too expensive to rent. The solution was to find a building that was specifically made for the use of scouts. A barn that had originally been built for the purpose of holding the cows and pigs of the butchering business operation of Cyrus and Nathan B. Stowe suited the purpose for the Girl Scouts. It was an ideal location, in town, and close enough to the schools for the girls to walk to their meetings. It is unclear how long the building has been there. Some accounts suggested it was built in the 1700s, but a report by architect Lawrence Sorley and historian Anne McCarthy Forbes concluded that the building was more likely constructed in the mid-1800s. After Nathan Stowe's death in 1901, the barn was rented out to other farmers and its condition deteriorated. The building was given to the Stowe family by the First Parish Church, which sold it to the Girl Scouts in 1930 for $1,000 to convert to a scout meeting place and community hall. The Great Depression already had seized the nation, but Concord responded to a townwide campaign to help the Girl Scouts. Spurred by three sizable anonymous donations, Concordians pledged $26,000 to renovate the barn, the equivalent of more than a third of a million dollars today. But the conversion also sowed the seeds of its current problems. In order to open it up to a large meeting house, big changes were made in the structure. All of the interior haylofts, livestock bays, and some of the support posts were removed to create a large open space. To give it the light, airy feeling it has now, large windows were put into the side walls, often at the cost of the wall support planking. All of these changes took away from the strength of the skeleton of the building. Throughout the years, there were occasional small modifications and short-term repairs, and battles with insects and wood rot. As the buildings aged, the effect of the renovations became evident. Could it collapse? <clears throat> Not in the near future, but it would have. It was losing a lot of strength. Okay. That's Scott Wood, a foreman of Colonial Barn Restoration, a specialty construction crew hired from time to time to help maintain the building. But by 2010, more work was needed. An architect recommended replacing the roof, but structurally, it was unclear if the building could bear the weight. The Concord Scout House Incorporated, the volunteer community board that owns and runs the building, decided they could no longer limp along with small modifications. So, um, I understand there are three phases that you're doing? Right now we're looking at five, actually. Um, with the walls and the portico on the side over the handicap ramp were the first. The second will be the roof and strengthening this end, we call it the gable end of the building because it's still an original barn under the, under the, the boarding. Um, and then we want to fix things like the drainage around the side of the building, um, tighten up the foundation, renovate the kitchen, um, which is not up to anybody's standards, and the bathrooms, <laughs> and eventually we hope to air condition the hall. The Scout House Board brought a structural engineer in to look at the building. They concluded that a major renovation would preserve the Scout House for years to come. Well, the Scout House has been a community resource since 1932, about 80 years now. Um, this project will ensure the building is still here 100 years from now. The price tag is steep, at least a million dollars. The Board has launched an ambitious fundraising effort. Um, we funded this summer's project with a $100,000 grant from the Community Preservation Committee and the other 75000 was our own donations that we had raised from ourselves, including a nice grant from the Sawyer Trust and a nice grant from the Sudbury Foundation. The first phase of the work was undertaken in the summer of 2011. Steel was laid carefully alongside posts and inside the barn's old walls. The old original timber that was used to make the inside wall paneling was saved. 
The work was scheduled to be finished by the fall when activities resume in full. Scout meetings resumed and the regular dances at the Scout House returned in December, almost unaware of the major changes that had been taken. My name is Claire Odom and I live in Arlington, Massachusetts. So, um, what do you think of the Scout House? I love it. It's a beautiful building. I love the history and the architecture, the cute kitchen, and I feel badly they're going to renovate it. And it's a wonderful community building. The Boy Scout and Girl Scout troops also pitched in, making contributions from their own fundraising activities. The board expects the work to be completed in three years. John Tovrov says it will ensure that the Scout House lasts for another century. And without it, you know, community happens when people come together. Yeah. And they need a place to come together. And this is it.